date was October 8, 2005. The mathematics of qualification for the 2006 World Cup in Germany were simple. Ivory Coast was playing against Sudan in a World Cup qualifier, knowing that they needed to better the result of Cameroon, who were playing Egypt on the same night, to go through. The elephants of Ivory Coast were in what we football fans would describe as their golden era, led by the artfully bruising Didier Drogba, with Kolo Touri, Emmanuel Ebal, and Didier Zakora all also shining in the Premier League, a world away in London. Yaya Touri, then with Greek side Olympiakos and still considered raw, was waiting in the wings. This was a squad that could match anything on the African continent. Yet, while Ivory Coast footballing stars stood on the verge of history, back home the country teetered on the edge of something dark. A civil war that began in 2002 had divided the country, with President Lauren Bagbo's government controlling the South and a rebel faction known as the New Forces of Ivory Coast, led by Guillaume Soro, controlling the North. Luckily for Drogba and his teammates, Pierre Wome of the Indomitable Lions of Cameroon missed from the spot to allow Ivory Coast through to the World Cup for the first time in their history. Quite rightly, the players celebrated wildly. But it wasn't long before Drogba's attentions turned to the civil war that had been raging in his nation since 2002. Speaking after the match, he said, Vous avez vu, on vous a prouvé aujourd'hui que toute la Côte d'Ivoire peut cohabiter, peut jouer ensemble pour un même objectif, qualifier pour le, se qualifier pour le mondial. Vous nous avez promis que cette fête allait rassembler le peuple. Aujourd'hui, on vous demande, s'il vous plaît, on se met à genoux. Pardonnez. 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 Le seul pays, le seul pays de l'Afrique qui a toutes ses richesses ne peut pas sombrer dans la guerre comme ça. S'il vous plaît, déposez tous les armes, faites les élections, organisez les élections et tout ira du mieux. On veut s'amuser, arrêtez vos fusillades, on veut s'amuser, arrêtez vos fusillades. While any Hollywood scriptwriter would have been proud of this ending, the story was not quite finished. At the 2006 World Cup, Ivory Coast had been knocked out at the group stage losing to Argentina and the Netherlands before beating Serbia and Montenegro. It was a respectable first performance. The following year, an extraordinary announcement was made by Drogba, while touring the rebel-held area of his homeland after claiming the African Footballer of the Year award. Ivory Coast home match against Madagascar, due to be played on June 3, 2007, would not be played in Abidjan as scheduled, he said, but instead in Boake, the symbolic center of the rebellion. This would have been unimaginable just two years before. Whether presidential permission was given for Drogba's announcement or not, it's still not entirely clear. On the pitch, any notion that the script would not be a fairy tale was dispelled when Solomon Kalu tapped in on 18 minutes. The goals kept coming, with just five minutes to go, and with Ivory Coast leading four goals to zero, the stage was set for the spectacular finale everybody had hoped for. A lofted ball from midfield dropped behind the defense into the path of the onrushing Drogba. Delicate control and a delightful second touch took him round the goalkeeper, and he slid the ball into an empty net. The explosion of noise defied the stadium's modest capacity. The country's messiah wheeled along the running track in celebration, players and supporters streaming in his wake. Above him in the stands, old adversaries celebrated together. The final whistle brought fans rushing onto the pitch, with security personnel forming protective screens around the players, most of all Drogba. The symbolic gesture of the game in Boake seemed to have united a country once again. It was euphoria across the whole country. Everybody came together, says Nahor. We had so much hope in Drogba and his team. The tourists from the north, Drogba from the south. It was a true Ivorian Bissay. However, what followed was sadly very different. With divisions running deep and memories short, the euphoria surrounding those two matches began to fade. Just five years later, violence again gripped the country after disputed elections, 
resulting in the deaths of 3,000 people and culminating in the arrest of President Bagbo and his eventual trial at the Hague for Crimes Against Humanity. In January 2019, he was acquitted on all charges. Two years later, the International Criminal Court upheld the acquittal of former President Lauren Bagbo on charges of crimes against humanity. Ivory Coast, Golden Generation, never truly fulfilled their potential, losing on penalties in the final of the African Cup of Nations in both 2006 and 2012. Their star power dwindled in response. Perhaps it was simply impossible to follow on from the seismic events of 2005 and 2007. Drago retired from football in 2018 after a glittering career that saw success in six countries with a place in the pantheon of African greats, if not world greats, already assured. But he and his teammates were responsible for something far bigger than just football and glory. They showed that we could still live together, that we could be the Ivory Coast that we had been before. It wasn't about football, but rather the unification of a country, says Omar. Drogba and his teammates didn't single-handedly stop the civil war. But over the course of two football matches, they did at least give their beleaguered country a reason to hope. This is just one of the many stories which depict that football could be used for the greater good and unity of all of us Africans and the world at large. This video wasn't only made with the intention to tell the Ivory Coast story, but most importantly to add our voice to the many African footballers who have been leading the campaign of Western media under looking the very importance of the African Cup of Nations. Cameroon is set for this year's competition and are also very strong contenders for the title alongside the Black Stars of Ghana, the Eagles of Nigeria, the Taranga Lions of Senegal and many more. We wish the tournament is a success and hope that the joy we share in the game of football is spread across to areas of turmoil on the continent. Thank you. If you enjoyed this video please do not forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications.